candles on the way I'm sliding up. I won't join no gang cause I speak truth and I ain't slime enough. I can't kill my brothers. We the same, it's just not adding up. Esau, he a killer. Gino side, he keeps attracting us. Most, Most I, I say, say be fruitful, multiply, so we be adding up. Compare his seed to the sand of the sea, we deep, so you can't add us up. My people, they got hate inside their heart, they wanna paint us up. Grow up in the red zone, blood tears, I see red flags on us. This world be killing me with lies the way they capping on me. Like these publicans, they coons and seeing the way they taxing on me. Prove what you say, the evidence, show me the facts, little homie. Don't hold your tongue, just bring it out. What's on your mind, little brody? Riding on 4 Giados, bougie, how we sit, Moscato. Huh. Feast days of the Lord, champagne be rainy, poncho. Huh. Salvation of the Lord's people, come on, we need that pronto. Huh. Wisdom, yes, it bring riches like we just won the lotto. Keep huh. these commandments in the faith, my brother, that's the motto. Huh. Most how humble you quick, boy, if you think you macho. It's real, we poor, but we rich in spirit. Blow him up like beers, maybe Jerry. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they all on in order. Right? Bring it up. This is the book of uh, Babylon, it's in book two, from page. 52. First of all, in ancient periods, the black Hebrew, uh -huh. the black Hebrew, it says the black Hebrews. Now, why does it say black Hebrews if the Jewish man is, is supposed to be a, a white man? That's because the these Hebrew Israelites, when you actually go into the history, you understand this is our people. All right, what's going on with your family? What's going on with you, man? What's your name? Jay. Your name Jay? All right, my name Kabash, man. It's nice to meet you, man. What y'all here doing today? It's Ryan, you and your son, man. All right, that's all praise. I can't wait till my son get that big, man. I got a little, little one-year-old, man. Be running around, eating dirt and all that kind of stuff. You remember those days, man? <laughs> you remember those days? That's what's up, man. So, um, you know, I see you stepped up on this, man. What's on your mind when you see all this stuff? Like, what's, what's on your mind? You just check this out. All right, I got a question for you. What's your religious background, Jay? Really don't have one. Man. Really don't have one. Was you raised in any kind of religion? Not really. Not really. Right. So, how you feel about the Bible, the Holy Bible? That's what the Bible. You that's what the Bible. Yeah, oh, you believe you believe in God? Okay, okay, that's what's up. So, the Bible, though, right? Like, what what is the Bible? Like, if I was to ask you, like, what is the Bible? Like, what would you? Say, like, how would you answer that question? The Bible is the New Testament. What about the Old Testament? Okay, okay, okay. So I got a question for you. You said New Testament, right? Who is the New Testament for? Oh no, brother, what's going on? I'm just asking you a question. What's going on, big bro? Right? What's going on with your family? Come talk to us. What's your religious background? Y'all don't have one? Y'all believe in the Bible? Some I can talk to you. We got, we got, we got, we got y'all opinion on this one verse. Why right, can we get this one verse for y'all? Get y'all opinion on it? Give me Acts 13 and 1. We want to get your opinion on this, this verse real quick. In the, in the New Testament, the book of Acts. Y'all believe in the New Testament? The book of Acts? Okay. We're going to read this. Somebody pull up the uh, other def and the other translations. I believe that's the NLT. Book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 1 and it reads, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. That was what? That was called nigger. Right, so in the Bible you had a man named Simeon. One of his surnames was nigger. You ever heard that before? Right, so what y'all think about that? That a, a Jew, his, his surname was nigger, meaning black. What y'all think about that? Uh, it's in the Bible, right? So Simeon, that would make him what though? Like, how would he like look? If they calling him nigger, meaning black. Like, what would his, his skin complexion be? Dark, right? How about Christ? Christ was a Jew too, wasn't he? How did Christ look? What was his skin complexion? Black, right? Y'all heard that before. Hair like wool, bronze skin. Okay, okay, so wasn't Christ a Jew though? Right, so how are the Jews white? They're not? You say the Jews are white and black. Is your mom Chinese and black or is she just straight black? Right, so how can a race be two races? The Jews can't be white and black. A Jew is an actual person, like it's a seed line. So if the Jews were black thousands of years ago, how are they white today? Something to think about, right? That's a good question, ain't it, brother? That's a great question. The thing is, when you go into the Bible, 
you will start reading and learning a few things. Can we show y'all something really quick of what, what Jesus said about the Jews? Get Luke 21 and 20. Get Luke 21 and 20. Now I want you to go to page 84 in this book. And hey, you give me Second Maccabees chapter one and one. I right, bring this up. This is the book of Saint Luke chapter twenty one and verse twenty, and it reads thus: And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, now this is closer to Christ's death. He died around thirty to thirty three uh, A.D. But you had an event in seventy A.D. that he's telling the future about. Seventy A.D. Which we go read out this history book. The Jews actually got kicked out of Jerusalem by the Romans. Christ is giving out that warning right now. He go break it down. Read it. Book of St. Luke, chapter 21, verse 20 again. Right. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies. Come past with armies, the Roman armies. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Right, the destruction of Jerusalem is near. Because that was prophesied all throughout the Old Testament, that Jerusalem will be destroyed. Read then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. All right, so those people that are in, in Judea flee to the mountains. Now, what you got to understand is, give me Acts 6 and 9 real quick. When you're in Judea, Jerusalem, right, what's around that area? I mean, it's a lot of land, but you got Saudi Arabia, and then right down going south, you have Egypt, Africa. So when he said flee into the mountains, he said, flee out of Jer Jerusalem, and where would they go? Saudi Arabia and Africa. Now let's check this verse out. Let's read this for you. This is the book of Acts, chapter 6 and verse 9. And it reads thus, Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. The Libertines. Right, read. And Cyrenians. The Cyrenians, read. And Alexandrians. Cyrenes. Uh, and, and Alexandria are in Africa. Alexandria is in Egypt. So you had Jew synagogues throughout Africa already. Now check this out in 2 Maccabees. Look at 2 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 1. Bring it the brethren, the Jews that be in Jerusalem. The Jews in Jerusalem are writing a letter to who? And in the land of Judea, which unto the brethren, the Jews are throughout Egypt. Who? The Jews are throughout Egypt. So you had Jews already through, because this is Maccabee, that's during the Greek captivity, like 200 BC. So that's 200 years before Christ. They already had this established. So when Christ is saying, look, flee to the mountains, he's saying, flee to Africa. Get out of here. Right now, we go read that again in, uh, in Luke 21. Uh, Check it out. This is Luke chapter 21 and verse 21. Right. And when ye shall see... Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Right. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain. They fled to Africa, fled to Saudi Arabia, because even when you go into the Mohammedan expansion, when Muhammad came about, he was learning from Jews that was in that area. And actually, it's a, I believe, I, you know, excuse my pronunciation, but it's called Banu Khwarizmia, something like that. It was a Jew set in uh, Saudi Arabia that he basically destroyed in something called the Battle of the Trench. You can look into that history where the Muhammad Islam, Islamic, they kind of killed and slaughtered the Jews. Now right, we go keep reading. Which flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter there into. So if you're in another country, don't come to Jerusalem because it's about to get destroyed. I jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Jews are going to fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive. They shall be what? Led away captive. They will be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Christ warned them and said, look, you got to get out of Jerusalem because the Gentiles are about to trodden down Jerusalem. And y'all go not see your homeland anymore. 70 AD, they got besieged by the Romans. And guess what? The Jews never went back to their land. They fled into Africa. They fled into Saudi Arabia. And guess what happened to those Jews that fled into Africa? They dwelt there for centuries and centuries. And guess what happened in the 1600s? The white man got back in power. And who did he enslave? Was it Africans? No. He enslaved the Jews. That's right. Look up Kingdom of Wider. Somebody look up Kingdom of Wider and on uh, Google. 
We're going to show y'all a West African city or country called the Kingdom of Wida in the Bible. We go, or not in the Bible, but in history. It's Y, it's Y H, or it's Y, yeah, that right there. You got it? Pull it up right here. Yep, right here. Let's read that first part. God, the kingdom of Wida, the kingdom of Wida, known as what? Known locally. But also as a spell, a old literature, a uh, Yudu, like oh Khan, Judah. What is it called? Judah. Judah. Y'all know who Judah is? A little bit familiar. A little bit familiar. Judah is a son of Israel. That's right. The Israelites. That's where you get the term Jew from, house of Judah. So it was a kingdom, the kingdom of Wida. It also was known as the kingdom of Judah. And let's see where it was located. What was it about? Was a kingdom on the coast of West Africa. Was what? Uh, the kingdom on the coast of West Africa. Y'all heard that? Kingdom of Judah, Wider, was a kingdom on West Africa. It was a kingdom where? And not what is now Benin. It was a kingdom on the coast of West Africa. And what is now Benin. It was a major slave trading. Oh, no, read that again. It was a major slave trading area which exported more than 1 million Africans to the United States, the Caribbean, and Brazil. See that? So the kingdom of Wida, or the kingdom of Judah, was a major slave port in West Africa. And you got other ones outside of that, like the Ashanti tribe. They come from Ghana. That's another West Coast, West uh, Coast Africa. And guess what the Ashanti did? They kept the Sabbath. They had priests that had breastplates. That was divided into 12. They had a, a god named Name uh, Nakapone, which means God, the true God, the God of the seventh day. You can look this stuff up. That's literally what it means. So why was Africans on the West Coast keeping Jew customs? Because they were the people that fled in 70 AD. That's our forefathers. That's why the Jews are black. Now, how did they turn white? It's something called the Khazar Empire. They converted to Judaism, and I believe like the six or seven hundreds, and they ended up going to Eastern Europe. World War Two ended up, ha or World War, uh, yeah, World War Two happened, and then they ended up getting that land in 1948 under the British Balfour. That never was their land ever. That's why they fighting right now, because that never was their land. They don't belong there. So the Jews aren't white and black. What you have on your case is something called identity theft. What's your name? Nelson. Nelson? The house, my feet kicked up. And then you just come in and you're like, hold on, who are you? I'm, I'm Nelson. And I've just kind of got the keys and I'm just in your house. You'd be mad, wouldn't you? So guess what? We we, we so-called angry black men. Because they're they in our homeland right now. They took, they literally took our homeland. And guess what? The Bible told us that too. The Bible told us they would take our homeland in, right here. Right, we're going to read it for you. Real quick, get Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation 2 and 9, then get, get uh, what's that, Ezekiel 35. It's the book of Revelations, chapter 2 and verse 9, and it reads thus. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Right, this is Christ talking to the Jews. And I know your tribulation. I know your poverty, man. I know your struggle. But last time I checked, is the Jewish man struggling? Is he in poverty or does he own entertainment? Print money. So Christ is talking to the Jews. I know your struggle. I feel your pain. All right, let's see what he said. But thou art rich. Hold on, we rich though. Because even if you ain't Christian, you believe the Bible. You believe in a higher power. We spiritual people. We always have some kind of faith. We was talking to so-called white people yesterday. The whole family was atheists. Have you ever seen a black family full of atheists? You might have a rebellious son. He kind of atheist. But, I mean, no black family, the entire family is atheist. That, that, that doesn't exist because we rich in that faith. And we got the Lord with us. That's why every black person, so-called black person, because we really Jews, have some kind of feeling of the Most High. No matter what we believe in, we're searching for something because we know it's something bigger than us. Everybody else ain't like that. The East Indian, they worship elephants and cows. The Chinese man, the, the year of the dog. The white man, he's atheist and follow everybody else's religion. Us, we like, it's something out there and we follow everybody else's religion because we got to feel something. Right, read this. And I know the blasphemy. I know the lie against God of what? Of them which say they are Jews. They say they are Jews, but what? And are not. They're not the Jews, but are what? 
but of the synagogue of Satan. Oh no, we read the Holy Bible. We didn't write this last night. We didn't kind of all get in the huddle and say, you know, we finna write this. Then we gonna go out there and just start lying to people. We were actually reading the Holy Bible. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon us to get this understanding so we can teach our people and show our people this marvelous gospel and good news. That we're actually the people of the Bible. We're God's chosen people. Y'all understand that it makes sense? So we the Jews according to the Bible. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I see you smiling ear to ear. That's a beautiful thing. Like, hold on, we, we really God's chosen people? I can't believe it. Well, you gotta believe it, brother. We the chosen. Right, that's us. Bring this up. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, and verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Right. The heathen are everyone outside of Israel. But this specific heathen is talking about the Edomites. Those people who are in the land of Israel. Let's go say it. And against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. The Lord said they appointed my land into their possession. That's a future prophecy. The children of Idumia. Those are the Edomites. Read. It says, with the joy of all their heart. So they took it with the joy of their heart. They got Pink City. Right? It's an all homosexual city out there. They out there banging their head against the wall. Right? Circling chickens around. Doing all kind of abominable smoking kosher cigarettes. They just having a great time in our land. Right? And we here in America paying taxes with white man last names. Forced to keep these laws that was forced upon us. In the land where we still consider three fifths of a hill or three fourths of three fifths, whatever it is, where we less we consider less than human. That's why they was able to do this kind of stuff to us, brother. Right? Check this image out. Check this out. She gonna show that to the. That's why they did this to us, brother. That's why they did that to us, man. Cause they think we animals, big bro. They think we animals and savages, man. Right? So. That's, that's what we forced to serve while they in our land. Can you read it? It says, with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. To cast it out for a prey. Right? So that's what happened to the Jews. Now I got to ask one more thing. How did our people come to America? Because this is the nail in the coffin. How did our people come to America? Just to further prove we the people of this book. Teach. Bring it out. We're with a boat, right? Yeah. Now y'all know where I'm going. Y'all like, every time I say something, I pull the scripture. So we're going to see if that's in the Bible too, right? Deuteronomy 28 and 68. We're going to see if that's also in the Bible. I mean, again, we did you write Deuteronomy? Uh, uh -uh. Right, how about you, brother? We didn't write this. Moses wrote these words. Right. We just read it, all right? Bring it up. Bring it up. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68, and it reads thus. Right. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Hold on. What was the Hebrew Israelites doing in Egypt? Are y'all familiar with the story of Moses? Y'all familiar with what was they kicking up, chilling? What was they doing? Slavery. Oh no, yeah, the brother said it. We was in slavery in Egypt. Right. So if the Lord is saying, I'm gonna bring you back to Egypt, he's talking to the people who just left Egypt as slaves. Do you think they like, oh I can't wait to go back? Or they like, whoa, whoa, I ain't trying to, I'm going to listen to what you're saying. I ain't trying to do that. You think they, they, they more so doing that, right? Because Egypt represents a place of bondage and servitude. All right, let's get Revelation 11 and 8 real quick. Revelation chapters 11 and verse 8. Just to show you this isn't the physical landmass of Egypt that it's talking about. Bring this up. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 11, and verse 8. Bring that out. In their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So it's a great city that's spiritual Sodom. Spiritual Egypt, meaning it's not actually the land, but it moves in the same spirit. It's figuratively that. Now, if you pull out a dollar bill, right, what's on the back of it? The RCNI, which represents, what does it look like? The Egyptian pyramid. You ever wonder to yourself, why? What does this symbolism of Egypt got to do with America? Right. Well, that's because it's spiritual Egypt. Just like it's spiritual Sodom. Y'all know what Sodom and Gomorrah was known for? Well, say it again. Homosexuality and lesbianism. What's the first play to legalize gay marriage? First play? Place. Oh, place. Uh, I want to say place. Nope. I'm talking about in today's time more so. America. America.
Rebecca was. Don't they put that in TV series? Yeah. Kid TV? Don't you see, isn't it a whole month dedicated to homosexuals? That's the spirit of Sodom. And it's the spirit of Egypt because it's a place of bondage for the Israelites. And the Lord told us how we would get to bondage. You said it earlier. You said with boats, right? Ships, boats. Okay, let's see what the Bible says. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. What does Egypt represent in the Bible? Bondage, right? So the Lord going to bring you to bondage, slavery again. Uh, uh, listen, real close, right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Again. With, with ships. ships. With ships. Well, you, I mean, you can come look at, look at it if you want to. It says with ships. S-H-I-P-S. The Lord said we would go to slavery with ships right here in the Bible. Right, can you read? Well, hold on real quick. Why didn't the pastor read that? Why didn't the pastor read that to us? Why when we went to church, instead of singing and dancing and giving our money away, the pastor was saying, look, King David, that's your forefather. Jesus Christ, that's your forefather. The mighty King Solomon, all gold temple, gold heathen under subjection, that's your forefather. Hezekiah, Uzziah. Right? How about all these mighty men? Josiah. All these mighty kings and mighty history taken from us. Stolen away from us. Because the pastor learns his knowledge from the white man. The seminaries, I call it the cemetery school. It's the school of the dead. They're not teaching life in the, in the church. In that, in that school. Because they never read this to us. This is important. See that smile on your face, man? This is important information. Here it is, we getting beat down in America. We gotta hold up signs that say our life matter, but the whole time, God said our life matter, man. And that's the most important thing. Why right? keep reading in that? By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Oh no, you're not gonna see your homeland, so you're gonna go to slavery with a shit. You ain't gonna see a and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. When we get off the ships in Egypt, you go get sold to your enemies. The same people that did this stuff to us. Read. For bond men and bond women. You'll be sold as a slave. A slave man. A slave woman. Read. And no man shall buy you. Nobody go redeem you out this slavery. Now I gotta ask you, who did that happen to? Slavery with ships. Being sold, never seeing a homeland. Who did it happen to? so-called blacks but we reading about who though in the bible the who we we reading about the blacks but who who did god identify these people as the jews and the israelites the jews and the israelites went to slavery on ships that's our people we're the jews and the israelites that makes sense all praise to the most high so think about it when you fill out a job application right ethnicity it says Black slash African American, white, Hispanic, other. What is black? Look at your arm real quick. Is your arm the same color as your shorts? No. No. Your arm is brown and your shorts are black. So how on earth are we black? Now let's touch on African American. African, Africa is named after a man named Scipio's Africanus. That's right. He's actually a Roman general that conquered a man named Hannibal in the Second Punic War. That's what happened in the Battle of Carthage. That's a Roman general. Now let's think about America. There's an Italian map maker. His name is Americo Vespucci. So essentially, when you say African-American, you're calling yourself two white boys. Because you got Scipio Africanus, Americo Vespucci. That's why they put African-American on you. And check this out. You look at your grandma, great grandma birth certificate, it doesn't say black or African American. It says Negro. So they constantly change our identity. Why would you try to change something constantly as if you're trying to hide something? They're trying to hide something by constantly changing it. Because now it's not black, they say Ados, American descendant of blacks. That's the new thing. So every 15, 20 years, our identity changes. It never said no Africans alive, it said no colored people. That's what it said. I never seen a sign that said sell African American, it said Negroes for sale. Because that's what, what they did to us, they changed our identity. Now I gotta ask, with the people of the book, 
What's our customs? What do we eat? What do we? How do we dress? Do we celebrate Christmas? Like, what do we do? Like, who are, who actually who are we really? What do we eat? That's some questions we, we can find out by reading our book, reading our Bible. Y'all want to find out what we used to eat? Can we show y'all what we used to eat? Y'all want to figure that out? Yep, let's get 1 Kings chapter 1 to 25. All praise. Let's see what we used to eat. Bring this up. Book of 1 Kings chapter 1 and verse 25, and it reads thus. For he has gone down this day and hath slain oxen. Salute oxen. Like good old oxtail. Y'all like oxtail? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like that oxtail, right? Can you read it? And fat cattle. Fat cattle. Let's talk about the cow. Right, what, what's your favorite kind of steak? T-bone. T-bone. Yeah, you got the T-bone. You got the oxtail. Right, can you read it? And sheep in abundance. Sheep in abundance. Y'all like lamb chops? Yeah. Lamb chops. How about lamb ribs? I ever had that before? No. No, I never had it either. I heard they banging though. Right, so you got lamb chops. Because a sheep, you know, it's just a, a lamb is a baby sheep. So they had lamb in, in that thing. Right, can you read it? And hath called all the king's sons. Oh, this is a, a royal meal that they eat. You got the king's son, right? Can you read it? And the captains of the host. You got the C captains of the army there. And Abiathar, the priest. You got the high priest in that thing. They eat oxen, cattle, like sheep, read it. And behold, they eat and drink. They ate and drank some wine, eating that ox, eating that sheep, eating that cattle. Now, what food wasn't mentioned in there? Pork. Now, why wasn't pork mentioned there? Why wasn't these mighty men of God devouring the hog? Why wouldn't they eat? Like, what, what's wrong with pork? It's filthy. It's unclean. It's unclean. So, do y'all eat pork? No. All praise to the most high. Clap it up. So, it's a reason why they didn't eat pork. We're going to show y'all. Get Deuteronomy chapter uh, 14. 14, I want verse, I believe, number 5. Yeah, you can get verse number 6. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 6, and it reads thus, And every beast that part of the hoof, and cleaveth the cleft, and the two claws, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat. Right. So if it has these three attributes, it got the two claws, it's divided, the hoof, and then if it does something called chew the cud. Chewing the cud is going into something called rumination. Do you ever heard, heard like a cow got four stomachs? Y'all never heard that before in school? Yeah, you heard that before? Well, it's really four compartments. So they have four compartments, the rumen, the uh, reticulum, I think the omisum and the omisum. Those, it, it basically breaks down the plant minerals uh, perfectly. That's what chewing the cud is. It's a scientific word, rumination. So you even get science in the Bible. But God told us not to eat pork because they don't go through rumination. A pork or pig to eat food and devours it like we do. And like y'all said, it's filthy. It eats anything. You know, the mob, they actually will have farms with pig styes and they will take the dead bodies and they'll go missing forever because they throw it in that pig stuff. You're looking for the body and, I mean, it's devoured by the pig because they eat anything. So I'm glad y'all don't eat pig. How about, how y'all feel about seafood though? You stop? How about y'all? Y'all like seafood? What's y'all favorite uh, dish? Salmon. Salmon. Okay. Okay. Y'all like y'all like bass? Bass. Bass. All right. Bass. Cool. All right. How about how about shrimp? Y'all y'all eat some some shrimp? Bubblegum shrimp. All right. All right. Y'all be cracking open the, the crab legs and getting into that. No crab. Lobster. Just, just shrimp. Just shrimp. All right. All right. So we gonna show y'all something to do around me 14 and 9. Let's get into the sea animals. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 9, and it reads thus. These ye shall eat of all that are in the water. God told us what we can and can't eat. He told us not to eat the pig because it's unhealthy for us. So let's see what he suggested for the, uh, the, the fish, the sea animals. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. So they got fins and scales, that's an animal or a, a, a sea creature fit for consumption. But if it doesn't have that, God said we can't eat it. Right, can you read it? And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat. So if it doesn't have fins and scales, then it's, it's not fit for consumption. Why is that? Well, uh, most animals or most sea creatures without fins, they're, they're bottom feeders. 
in yeah, the bottom feeders. And the scales works as a protection against the parasites in the water. So again, all health reasons of why the Most High gave us this diet. Now y'all mentioned something that y'all eat, and it was shrimp. So I got a question, does shrimp have fins and scales? No, it don't, got, it don't have neither. It got a bunch of legs, like a, like a roach or an insect. Because it is a roach of the sea. It's actually an anthropod. The same family of every insect on land are anthropods. Crabs, shrimp, lobster. They're actually in the same family. So the Lord created the, the shrimp to actually filter out the water. That's why y'all ever seen Finding Nemo? I'm not sure if y'all seen that movie, Finding Nemo. Well, Finding Nemo, it was a character, the shrimp. He had OCD. All he did was clean. Why, why was the shrimp only cleaning? Why? Because that's their nature. They clean the water. That's why the water is all these weird colors now. So shrimp is actually something God told us not to eat. You ever heard that before? That God told us not to eat shrimp? Now, I'm not expecting y'all to change your ways right now immediately, but if I were you, I would. Because, again, God punished our people for breaking such commandments. And we don't know the mercy that the Lord go extend on us. That could be your last shrimp, brother, that you eat before you have a stroke or a heart attack, high cholesterol, or gout. That's why our people have all these diseases. People having a stroke at 45 because they eating all that pork. They devouring that crab leg, the crab boils, and gumbo and all that. So we have to come back to these laws because it's good for our health. It's good for our well-being. All right, give me some rack chapter 30 and, 20, and 15, and you give me Judith chapter 10 and 1. So y'all have to do away with the shrimp. And if y'all eat crab lobster, I got to do away with that. Y'all already don't eat pork. So all praises to that, but y'all gotta, you know, make your way away from the shrimp. Bring this up. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30 and verse 15, and it reads, Health and good state of body are above all goal. Right. Uh, health and good state of body is above all goal. We preach, brothers gotta exercise, drink your water, right? Eat herbs. That's what we preach for our people. And you damn sure gotta avoid that shrimp. You damn sure better get away from that, that oink oink. That poke on your folk. Like you read it? And a strong body. And a strong body, read it. Above infinite wealth. And a strong body is above infinite wealth, man. You gotta keep that strong body. How old is you, man? You don't mind me asking. 59. See, we can't tell, man. You ain't you don't look a day over over 40, over 40, man. That's right. That's right. So you gotta keep that 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 man. By getting away from that shrimp. And God go bless you with that with that, that healthy body. You want to live longer for your kids, grandkids, things like that. You know what I mean? So we got to avoid the things God told us not to eat. Right? You got a point? Yeah. We say in our communities that we have uh, diabetes that runs in the family, so on and so forth. No, that's not true. We just have bad daily habits that run in the family. So that's what we're trying to change is those daily habits. Make them better. You can read that verse. The book of Judah, chapter 12 and verse 1. Then he commanded to bring her in in where his plate was set. Right, hold on. So this is Judah. This is a mighty sister of the Bible. Right. Now, you heard of King David, Solomon. But you got mighty sisters too in this thing. Ah. So Judah, he's, they brought the plate. Right, let's see what Judah did when this man brought the plate to it. This man wasn't an Israelite. Right, let's see. And bade that they should prepare for her of his own meats. I want to give you my meats. What we eating over here. Let's see what Judah did. And that she should drink of his own wine. And Judith said, I will not eat. What she said? I will not eat. She said, hell no. Read. Thereof, lest there be an offense. I'm not eating that because it might be some pork in that. Or oh, it might be some shrimp in there. I might offend my God. Can you read? But provision shall be made for me of the things that I have brought. She said, look, bring my own food. Give me that ox right there, man. That chicken right there. Right, I'm not eating whatever you got. That's how we got to be. Like, I ain't eating that, man. I'm not eating that, that that pork rib. I'm going to eat me some beef ribs. That's what we go eat, beef ribs. I'm going to eat me some lamb chops. I ain't dealing with the pork. Right, bring it up. Verse 3. Then how the furnace said unto her, If thy provision should fail, how should we give thee the light? For there be none with us of thy nation. You see, that's none. Nobody else among them was of the nation of Israel. And that's like now we we in the in the midst of the Gentiles eating their bread. We gotta deny that bread. Real quick, let me tell you chapter one and verse nine. 
We ought to say the hell with the bread that they feeding us. Because they said shrimp is a delicacy. Well, hold on. I mean, God said we can't eat it. So who's right? Society, the people that rape, robbed, and murdered, the people that push homosexuality on kids and children and tell them, hey, you can be gender fluid, you can choose your nationality at five years old, we gonna trust those people or we gonna trust what God said? We gonna trust what God said. So God said don't eat pork, that's what I'm doing. I ain't dealing with it. Because God knows what's good for me. It's kind of like your daddy might say some stuff, you're like, man, get out of here, pops. Then you get older, you're like, dang, he was right. It was. He was, that's what that's what God is doing. So you might say, I like my shrimp, man. I want to I want to eat that shrimp. But God said no. So we gotta listen. And ultimately, it's for our health. All right, bring this up. Tobit chapter one and verse ten. And when we were carried away captives to Nineveh, right, we were carried away captives to Nineveh. We always been going in and out of different slaveries. So this is back when we went to slavery under the Assyrians in seven twenty two B C. Right, we've been going to slavery. This ain't our first rodeo because we we hard headed as hell. We keep breaking the commandments, so God keeps spanking our ass. Right, bring this up. All my brethren and those that were of my kindred did eat of the bread of the Gentiles. So all your brethren, all these people out here, they eating pork, they eating shrimp, crab, and lobster. Right, so this was Tobit. All his people was eating it. But let's see, was he a follower or a leader? Let's see what he did. Verse eleven. But I kept myself from eating. He did what? But I kept myself from eating because I remembered God with all my heart. Yeah, I remember God with all my mind, body, and soul. So I'm not eating that because I'd rather respect God than you. Matter of fact, our people were so zealous. I want to show y'all something. Our people were super zealous. Y'all ever heard how our people died to vote? Our people died to vote and got spat on to eat with the white man and all that madness. Let's see how our people felt when it came to pork, though. Let's see how our people got down. All right, let's get second back in verse 18. Let's get that. Bring this up. Second Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 18. Bring it up. Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man. You had an elder man, a principal scribe, yeah. A principal man. Let's see what happened. And of a well-favored countenance was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. So he was constrained. They got a pen on the wall, kind of opening his mouth like, open your mouth, we finna shove this pork down your throat. Now this is during the Greek captivity. It was forcing them to be Greeks. It's called Hellenization. That's why Paul said there's neither Jew nor Greek. Because guess what? Contrary to popular belief, y'all was Greeks before y'all came up to us. Now y'all know y'all Israelites. That's what Paul was doing. Hold on, it's no difference between y'all and us. We all one in Christ because he died for our sins. But he was talking about Israelites, but that's another topic. But we're going to keep reading this. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously. He chose what? Choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination. He said, man, I'd rather die than eat pork. How zealous is that? All you got to do is not go buy shrimp. But these people was getting forced to eat shrimp, crab, lobster, pork. He said, I'm going to die, man, before I do that. That's how zealous our people are for the Lord. We got to get that flame back, man. And understand, like, wait a minute. These men was ready to die over that. I ain't buying shrimp ever again. Because hold on, they say you got to vote because, you know, we died to vote. Well, we died not to eat pork. We died to keep the dietary law. So we go keep the dietary law. Bring it up. He spit it forth. He did what? He spit it forth. He put it in his mouth. He spit it out. And came of his own accord to the torment. To the torment. They was doing some sick stuff that we don't even want to utter because you might get sick to your stomach that they was doing to the Jews, the so-called white men. Even back then, during the Greek captivity. But nonetheless, they put that pork in his mouth. He spat it out. He said, I'm about to get tortured to death, but it is what it is. Because I'm not going to eat that in, in front of my people and take their spirit and their faith away. Because he was a principal man. That's what they like to do. They take the man, the famous man, and they uh, buck break him in front of the people. So now you can follow because, oh, he's doing it, I'm going to do it. Oh, who's he wearing the dress? And I'm going to do it. Drake paint his fingernails, and that's why I'm going to do it. It's cool. So that, they always get the principal top chief men to do these things because they know our people are sheep. We sheep, that's why we need a shepherd. If, you, if a sheep ain't got a shepherd, I mean, it might just walk off a cliff. That's what our people do daily, just walking off a cliff, walking into Christianity, walking into Islam, walking into Buddhism. We call it Buddhism. <laughs> right? Walking into all this, these different religions and all these different ways. So our people have to come back to their culture as the Israelites. Do you understand that? So our people ate. 
lamb, chicken. Our people ate fish, um, ox. That's the kind of stuff our people was eating. I mentioned something else, our holidays. How do you celebrate Christmas? Like, give me some of the ordinances you do. Yes. You give gifts. Yeah. What else you do? You cook a lot of food. You cook a lot of food. What what's some other things you do with, with Christmas? That's it. But you give gifts and you know it's usually a tree, you decorate it, it's decor, it's green and red, that's the colors. How about Halloween? How you celebrate that? Okay, you don't do Halloween. How about um what's another one that's in the world? Fourth of July. Fourth of July. What's the customs to that? Y'all don't celebrate that? Okay, so Christmas, right. So, you know, it's the presents, the tree. All right, how do you celebrate Pentecost? <laughs> fast. How, how, fast? Yep. How about the Passover? How about the new moon? How about the new moon? Hold on, so notice that. We can name all, we, we know of what, I mean, even y'all don't celebrate 4th of July. How do people celebrate it? Fireworks, barbecue. We know what they do. Halloween, they wear costumes, they go out trick or treat. But y'all know nothing about the Pentecost. Y'all know nothing about the Passover. But guess what? That's our customs. Our customs ain't Christmas. Matter of fact, that's a heathen custom. Let's get Jeremiah chapter 10. That's actually not our customs at all. Give me uh, Acts chapter 20 and 16. Bring this up. Book of Jeremiah. Why are we going to show y'all this? Christmas is found in the Bible. And notice y'all, we know these customs, but we don't know our own customs. And we're going to get that in a second. Bring it up. Book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2, and it reads thus. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Again, talking about the other nations, the heathen. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. The signs of heaven is the stars, the moon, the sun. They were dismayed at that, that stuff. They worshipped it. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. This is one of the vain customs of the heathen. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. They cut a tree out of forest. The work of the hands of the workman with the axe. Cut a tree with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They do what? They deck it with silver and with gold. They deck the tree. With silver and gold, read. Right? They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Right, they fasten the tree down after they cut it out of forest and deck it with silver and gold. Now, you got to understand, this custom is going back to the Babylonians. They used to uh, say that that tree represents Nimrod's uh, spirit. That's why they would deck the tree. And y'all, it's a song out there, it's a deck the halls and that, that yeah, that, that thing. Yeah, so you would see that this custom was being done, this predates Christ by, by centuries. So they say that's his birthday. First of all, you never see his birthday mentioned in the Bible. Second, this custom existed hundreds of years before his birth. And this is Christmas right here in the Bible. We know that custom, but we don't know what to do during Pentecost or Passover. That's a bad thing. Right, bring this up. This is the book of Acts, chapter 20, and verse 6. Right, 16. Uh, verse 16. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Hold on, he said, he said, I ain't selling that way. I got to get to Jerusalem for Pentecost. Right. Hey, that's our holiday. We're going to turn up. Our people, they rushing, they rushing, they put on their best outfit to go at the Thanksgiving dinner. But hold on, Paul, he said, man, I'm trying to get to the Passover. I'm trying to get to the Pentecost. That's what I'm dealing with. That's our customs right there. Pentecost is one of our holidays, a holy day. That's what the, the Pentecost is. That's what the Passover, New Moon is. But today is actually one of our holidays as well. Do y'all know what today is? Right, it's a it's a holiday we have every single week. Sabbath. Sabbath. The Sabbath. Sabbath. Today is the Sabbath. Amen. Today is the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Give me Second Maccabees 15, verse 3. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Give me uh Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 18. We're gonna get this for you real quick. Second Maccabees 15, verse 3. Bring it up. 
This is the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 15 and verse 3, and it reads thus. Then the most ungracious wretch demanded, if there were a mighty one in heaven that had commanded the Sabbath day to be kept. He demanded, wasn't it a mighty one in heaven that demanded the Sabbath day to be kept? And when they said, there is in heaven a living Lord and mighty who commanded the seventh day to be kept. The Lord commanded the seventh day to be kept. Now right, check this out. It's the book of Ezekiel. Was it 20? 20 and 9. God. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 19. I'm the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbath. And do what? And hallow my Sabbath. And they shall be a sign between me and you. That ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So that the Sabbath is a commandment to show that he's the Lord our God. Us keeping the Sabbath is, is, is the proof and the sign that that's our Lord. So we have to keep that seventh day to honor him. Because he rested the seventh day. So we should do the same thing. Now that's what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath day. It's the rest day. It's supposed to cease from your work. Now if everyone was ceasing from their work, would any of these stores be open? No, they'd be all closed. We'd all be resting. So are we supposed to go in and buy and sell if nobody's supposed to be working? No. No. We're not supposed to buy or sell on the Sabbath because you can't work on the Sabbath. That makes sense. So you can't work on the Sabbath. You can't cook on the Sabbath either. Get you some cold cuts. Some some y'all like cereal? I guess you a good salad. You know you can you can eat those things on the Sabbath, but you can't cook on the Sabbath. You're supposed to rest on the Sabbath day. Rest and, and give your time to the Lord. And, and the Sabbath starts at Friday sundown until Saturday sundown. Because a day doesn't start at midnight, like like contrary to popular belief. It starts at sunset. Because in ancient world they didn't look at the clock and say no, they looked at the sun. The sun is going down. The Sabbath is coming. So the Sabbath is Friday sundown, Saturday sundown. You can't buy, you can't sell, you can't work, can't cook. That makes sense? So y'all got to start keeping that Sabbath day. Because that's a day that the Lord gave to us to say that he's the Lord our God. And notice he said the Lord your God in there, right? I got I to gotta, I gotta bring it out to them fellas. I, I don't know if they ready for this. I got to... You gotta bring it out to them. Y'all think they ready? Y'all yeah, yeah, might be ready. So I gotta break the news to y'all. <sighs> Nobody outside the Israelites is gonna make it to the kingdom of heaven. I said it, man. I said it, man. I said it. I said it. I, I mean, I, you know, your, your white co worker, you know, your, your Chinese, you know, boss, the, 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 the Arab, that'd be like, yo, man, what's up, my brother? They're not gonna make it. They're not gonna make it. Y'all ever heard that Christ died for the world? Y'all ever heard that before? So how many worlds are there in the Bible? Two? Two? What you say? You say it's one world? You say two, one? Alright, let's see. Let's get Hebrews chapter one and two. Because I'm thinking about that verse in John 3 and 16. It said, God so loved the world. I know that verse, and everybody in the world knows that verse, front and back, backward, they can uh, spell it out. I mean, you can do anything with that verse, but let's check this out. Uh, one and one, king. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2, and it reads thus, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. He made the worlds. It's an S at the end right here. So it's plethora of worlds. I got a question for you. In the world of sports, who the best basketball player? LeBron. LeBron. How about? Jordan. Okay. So, all right. So have you ever uh, went to another state before? What state? What's the last place you've been to visit? Kentucky. It was a whole other world out there, wasn't it? You ever heard of that show called uh, the, the Different World? Yeah, yeah. Y'all heard of that show before? Was it in outer space? No. So why is it called a Different World? You ain't noticed what I just did, did you? I said the world of sports. <laughs> and you asked it. So hold on, so how we just know the world talking about everybody? It's multiple worlds right now. You got the world of sports, you got the world of plants, you got the... So what world did God love? 
Let's prove that the word world is just talking about a certain set of or nation. Bring this up. It's the book of Luke, chapter 2 and verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus. If y'all don't know who that is, that's the man that reigned after Julius Caesar. When Rome went from a republic to an empire. So this is the, the Roman emperor. Let's see what his law was. That all the world should be taxed. So if uh, Joe Biden said all the world should be taxed, he's not taxing people in China because he has jurisdiction over America. So that's the same as Caesar Augustus. He has jurisdiction over his landmass. But yet, they called it the what? Read that again. That all the world should be taxed. He said the world should be taxed. Because that word world isn't talking about the entire planet. It's a, a specific world. That's why Christ even said in John 17, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. That's what he said. So what world is it talking about in John 3.16 that God loved, he gave his son for? That's the question. Because it says whosoever. Let's get Acts 2 and 21. Now, if I say who, whosoever, if we all sitting at a dinner table, lunch table, and I'm like, whosoever can get a piece of, uh, of bread. Is my neighbor going to kick in my door and just start snatching food off? No, it's, a, it's the context. It's the people right here. Whosoever among us. So in John 3, you had Nicodemus and Christ, two Jews talking about Jew problems. He's like, hey, well, God loved the world. He gave his, he gave his only begotten son. They having a conversation amongst each other about the world of the Jews. All right, bring this up. This is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 21 and it reads thus. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah, Jesus. Close the Bible. Oh, no, we got to keep reading that. It said whosoever shall be saved. Keep reading. Yea, men of Israel. What did it say? Yea, men of Israel. Hear these words. Israel, hear these words. Whosoever amongst Israel, hear these words. Because Christ was quoting Joel, the second chapter. Joel 2 and 32 says, Whosoever amongst the children of Zion shall be delivered. He's quoting the Old Testament in John 3 and 16. So that world is actually talking about the world of Israel. Give me Isaiah 45 and 17. So contrary to popular belief, the other nations, they're not going to make it. And we're going to show y'all how they're going to make it. Get Isaiah 14 and 1. That's my favorite scripture. We're going to read that after this. Bring this out. Isaiah 45 and 17. I'll pray to the most up. Right? Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. And it reads. But Israel. But who? But Israel. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. With an everlasting salvation. Like this salvation forever. Everlasting, read. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. What is Israel? World without end. So Israel is a world without end. That's the world that's going to be saved. Because he just said right there that Israel is going to be saved with the everlasting salvation. Because what is salvation? It's physical. We have to actually get saved out of Babylon, out of the places of our captivity. We have to get saved out of here and get placed back in Jerusalem in our homeland because we can't do it ourselves. We're not up here saying, brother, join our army. We're going to get you some guns and we a militia. No, we're just telling you the words of the Lord. God going to do all the fighting for us. It's like he did in Egypt. All we did was cry. Say, Lord, man, we going through this bondage. And he sent Moses to plague. And then we just walked up out of there. It's like he plagued in America. I mean, America's getting plagued. I mean, if y'all don't notice it, the economy is, is all hell breaking loose with the economy. Look at the president. And, and that's the biggest play. He trying to shake somebody's hand. He like, like, who, like, who are you even looking at? Like, he, he mumbling. Like, he don't make no sense. He got dementia. That's the president. We never seen nothing like this before. Because America getting played right now. That's all that is. And I bring this up. It's like, real quick, this is showing, because we're showing you that the heathens, the, the people outside of Israel, they won't make it. And real quick, before we get this, get Revelation 21 and 12. Yes. And then we go show you about this right here. This is my favorite scripture, Isaiah 14 and 1. Now check this out. This. Yep. 21 and 12. Uh, this is the book of Revelations, chapter 21 and verse 12, and it reads thus. 
and had a war great and high. Now this war, that's talking about the kingdom of heaven. This is describing the kingdom. So it has a great high wall. And had 12 gates. I got one pearly gate. Had 12 gates. Had 12 gates. Free. And at the gates, 12 angels. So you got 12 angels in front of the gates. So if I got somebody blocking off a door, I mean, it's, it's like a bouncing. So you got 12 gates and you got 12 angels standing in front of the And the angels aren't, you know, just, they're not naked white babies. The angels are, like, they, they fierce beings when you read the Bible. So they standing in front of the gate. Read. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So what gate is Edom going to go through? How about Moab, Ham? If all the gates got the 12 Israelites on them. 12 gates, 12 sons of Israel. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, on down. 12 gates, 12 sons. How do, they, they not getting in. This is a, 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 a guest list. If your name ain't on the guest list, you ain't getting in this thing. It ain't no, let me slide you a 50. You ain't sliding a 50 to get to the king. Nah, they not dealing with that. Why are they going to stop you at that gate and say you ain't getting in this kingdom? Now, the nations will be in the kingdom because we're we, we in the white man kingdom right now. But are we on the same level as him? He gets more privileges, a head start. So they'll be in the kingdom, but it's, it's roles to the kingdom. And we're going to show you that in Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Jacob are the Israelites. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So the Lord will have mercy on us. I know, check this, put a, put a sign up. Right? This is what we've been through. Right? Emmett Till, Tamir Rice, slavery. Right? That's what we've been through. But at the end, the Lord will have mercy on us. Read. And will yet choose Israel. He's going to yet choose Israel. Read. And set them in their own land. Remember how we started this off? We lost our land, didn't we? We got kicked out by the Romans. We never been back. They got placed in our land. The Lord will set us back in that land, though. That's what he's saying in the end. This hasn't happened yet. This is going to happen. We go get set in that land by the hand of God. When Christ comes back, he go put us in that land. Read. In the strangers. The strangers. Everybody outside of Israel. Read. Shall be joined with them. So they're going to be with us in the kingdom. Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to take them and bring them to Jerusalem. Read. It says, in the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. So we're going to possess them for servants and handmaids. Read. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. We're going to take them captive because we were their captives. Read. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So God said, as a recompense for my chosen people, for all the, real, real quick, pull that sign up, Josiah. Show them that sign real quick. That, that one. Go, go show them that sign real quick. Because y'all got to visualize this. Him, show, show the couple right there. Show Jay and, and his wife. That, look, check that out. For all that, God said, hey, you're going to put them in captivity. That's, the, that's justice. That's, 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 so, that's karma. That's, you reap what you sow. You thought they could just get away with that and God was going to do nothing? No, God got something for them. Yep. And we just got to sit here, patiently wait, preach the word of the Lord, and, and just live in this society. That's the, that's the true gospel. Because what's really good news, yeah. understanding, wait, the people that's oppressed, getting beat down in this society, the people they spit on, look at it, it's nothing. Those the people that God's going to raise up from the ashes and put on top. That's a true underdog, real, yeah. that's a mighty story right there. That's a real boss move. Right. Not just rapture, everybody here, we all, no, that's not real justice. I, honestly, I wouldn't want to serve a guy like that. And I didn't, I didn't deal with Christianity in the world. I said, that's, that don't even make sense. So a white man gonna come and save me from the white man? <laughs> Think about it. It don't even make sense. What white man ever died for a Negro? Ever. I've never seen it. i never seen a white, but I've seen plenty of so-called black men be martyrs for their people. Uh, That's what Christ was. He died a slave's death. He got beat with a whip, and then he got hung on, on, on wood. He got hung on a tree, on a cross. That's a slave's death. He died the same deaths 
hundreds and thousands of our brothers died, even on them pictures. That's how you know he one of us. He suffered what we suffered. That's right. That's why he came on the earth. You see, that's how Christ died for us, so we can keep the commandments. Die, Christ died so we get to keep the commandments. We get a second try at this thing. We get a second go around. So we got to take heed to everything that Christ said and get this good recompense. We, we, I want the kingdom. I want the streets painted in gold. Right. Y'all thought the gold was just going to magically appear? No, nah, then somebody got to build that. Yeah. And it's going to be the heathen. I don't know about y'all, but I want, you know, Chinese, they kind of feeding me grapes. That's what I want. Yeah, and I right. want what God said I can get. Because God said we can get it. That makes sense? Well, how y'all feel about that verse? You say what? Yeah, how you feel about that one? I said, say we going to rule over our oppressors. <laughs> the question is, call me Ashala. <laughs> call me Ashala, man. Man, he said we deserve it. We do deserve it. After all what we've been through. And guess what? We all wondering when, sister. We all we all wondering when. Even Christ don't know when he's coming back. Only the most high God, Yahweh know. Get uh, Revelation 13 and 9. Bring this up. Book of Revelations, chapter 13. In verse number nine, and it reads thus: If any man hear, if any, ah, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So they led to slavery; they gotta go to slavery. Like I said, we go rule over all oppressors, right? He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. They killed, robbed us with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That's the patience and faith. We got faith in that, and we patient for that. I don't know if it's going to be our lifetime. Hopefully it is. Might be my kids' lifetime, grandkids' life, but it's close. Because you can see the signs of the earth. That it, I mean, it can't last that much longer. They push, I mean, they pushing homosexuality on babies, man. How much wicked can this place get? Right. Sexy Red is a popular artist. How did that happen? <laughs> because this earth is waxing worse and worse and worse. And it's going to continue to do so. So we don't know how bad this thing go get, but it's all in the Lord's hand. But we just patiently waiting, sister. And guess what? Christ said, if you die in Christ, you go rise up in the judgment day and get the same reward anyway. So all you got to do is keep the faith patience. Even if we die on this side, we go raise up when he come back still. And still get the kingdom. Still get the servants and handmaids. So we just still got, we still got to endure no excuse. Like, bring this up. This is Matthew 24, starting at verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. See that? We don't know what hour uh, Christ is coming back, right? But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. It says, therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man coming. Yeah, so what hour you think he's not coming, that's when he coming. That's why I say you got to uh, be ready. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Right, right, right. It's a parable about uh, virgins, uh, ten virgins. You have five that didn't trim their lamps. You have five that kept their lamps trimmed. So when the bridegroom opened up the door, the five, they was already ready. Like We got our, they left, closed the door on the other five. That was representing how the kingdom go be. A lot of our people ain't going to listen to this word. How many people walk by? They didn't hear this word, the words of the Lord. We say, brother, you got a minute for God? Nope. Hey, brother, you're the greatest person on earth. No, I'm Muslim. Hey, well, hold on, sister. You know I'm a twerk. All right, so our people don't like to listen to the words of the Lord, and God told us that too. God said we was hard-headed, stiff-necked as hell. But at the end of the day, we just go teach the gospel to our people that the Lord wants to hear it. Because God got y'all right here right now. It's not me. God got y'all right here in this moment so y'all can hear this, internalize it, take it, learn more, and, you know, Lord willing, you got some printed song. Lord willing, you start keeping the commandments. All right, bring it up. You got some more on that. Oh, God. Verse 45, it says, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Who is what? Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give the meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. See, you got to be faithful. got to be faithful that the Lord, he is coming back, the most high God. Now, we touched on a few things. If y'all remember, what all we touched on? Name like three things y'all learned. Uh, 
You gotta, gotta be patient. You gotta, you gotta be patient. And then. But what about the food? What about the food? Heat. Like the shrimp. Right. Try, uh, Pork. Right. Uh, Christmas. Right. Uh, Instead of Christmas, what, what name a holiday we supposed to keep? Pentecost. Pentecost. That's one. What about one y'all learned about? You can't buy or sell. Which one was that? Saturday. 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 And when is that? Saturday. 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 Friday, Saturday. 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 Jews, Israelites, yeah, Israelites and Jews, right, right, okay, so what about the other name, what was that? Well, we got to make sure y'all retaining the information, because it's a lot, we only y'all with one more, we don't want to overfeed y'all, so we only leave y'all with one more, so we touched on our language, touched on a couple of our, our holidays, another thing that, we're not language, I'm sorry, we touched on our, um, our diet, and we touched on a few of our holidays, but one thing I wanted to touch on was our language. Because y'all ever heard like, uh, Negroes can't read, yada, 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 we couldn't read. Well, that wasn't what it was. We just didn't understand the language they were speaking. Because we had our own language. Bring this up. This is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 18 and verse 28. And it reads thus. Then Rob Shake stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king. Sorry, that's all I wanted. He said he cried in the Jews' language. So we had our own language. Had our own holidays, our own language, our own food. The Bible get good, man. Start learning about yourself. Like, woo. I was a, I was a nation before. I wasn't always a nigga. I wasn't always a color. Oh, we had a language. We had kings and gold. And, oh, man, that's a beautiful thing. But nonetheless, the Jews' language is what we call Hebrew. Right? It's called Hebrew. We're going to show you all some Hebrew in a second. Bring this up. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 49. This is another curse. Remember, we went to slavery on ships. Y'all remember that, right? This is another curse that happened. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. The Lord brought a nation from far against us. Read. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flight. What's the American animal uh, symbol? The eagle. Read that part again. As swift as the eagle flight. The Lord said they came swift as the eagle flight. Y'all know the Roman symbol was an eagle. The Greece symbol was an eagle. It's a Spain symbol that's an eagle. You look this stuff up. So they swift as the eagle. Because they always personify themselves as that, as that bird of prey. Like you read A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So the Lord brought a nation whose tongue we didn't understand. Because we spoke Hebrew. That's our language. And I want to show y'all some Hebrew right here. Some ancient Hebrew. Now Hebrew is read from the, uh, the uh, right to the left. It's not like English. Ancient languages are right to left. So we're going to read this. I want y'all to uh, come up real quick. Check this out. Step out. I just want y'all to see this. This the, is this the translation how you say it. Say that. How I you read it this way, what I'm pointing at. Yeah. That's no no right here, this is how you pronounce it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yahawa. Yahawa. Say Yahawa. 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 Do I know who Yahawa is? What that means? God. God. He exists. That's what this is. Yahawa. He exists. He is. What did he say to Moses when he said, hey, what's your name? He said, I am. Because he is. He just is. He has no beginning. I am. So Moses said, well, he is. That's hard. I am. What's your name? My name. I am. Now, hold on. Let's check this one out. What that say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Sha. Yeah, yeah. Hawasha. Yeah, Yes, who Yahawasha. That means he delivers. That's the right name for Jesus. Yahawa. Yahawasha. Say it with me. Yahawa. Yahawasha. Yahawa. Yahawasha. Are y'all say it, brothers? Yahawa. Yahawasha. Yahawa. Yahawasha. Yahawa. Yahawasha. Right, that's the name of our God. That's, right. that's the name of our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shah. Yahweh. Yahweh. You gotta take a picture of that. Take a picture of your God. The God of Israel. Take a picture of your God. 
Hey, clap it up for them. Clap it up for your, your God right here. Y'all deserve the true name of y'all God, Yahweh. And then his son is Yahweh Shah, the God of Israel. Give me Judah chapter 10 and verse 1. That's who he is, the God of Israel. Give me uh, Psalms uh, 79 and 1. Check this out. Bring it up. Judith chapter 10 and verse 1. Right. Now after that, she has ceased to cry unto the God of Israel. The God of who? The God of Israel. Was Yahweh? The God of Israel. Was Yahweh? The God of Israel. It's the God of Israel. You see that? Yahweh. That's our God. We got to take pride in that. Give me Joel 2 and uh, 27. Bring it up. The book of the Psalms chapter 79 and verse 1. It's like, no, that's not what I want. 76 and 1. That's what I want. 76 and 1. Bring it up. Book of Psalms chapter 76 and verse 1 in the reads, In Judah, Yahweh is known. His name is great in Israel. The Lord said, In Judah is Yahweh known. His name is great in Israel. The Lord is great in Israel. Give me 2 Kings chapter 5 and 15. Bring this up. Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. Another one of my favorite verses. Read. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Oh, everybody. That I am in the midst of Israel. In the midst of who? In the midst of Israel. Who is Israel? We are. We are Israel. So God is in the midst of Israel. Read. And that I am Yahweh, your God. I am who? That I am Yahweh, your God. I am who? That I am Yahweh, your God. And none else. And none else. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. He said we never go be ashamed of that, man. Yahweh. Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, is our God, and we ain't ashamed of it. He's not the God of nobody else, man. That's why they don't suffer what we suffer. That's why they don't deal with what we deal with, because they're not under the curses. They're not the ones who was given the law. The Lord don't care about them, man. He care about his people. But right, give me Matthew 1 and 21. Bring this up. This is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5 and verse 15. And it reads, and he returned to the man of God. He returned to the prophet. Read. Who is an Israelite. He and all his company. Right. And came and stood before him. Right. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth. What did he say? No, I know that there is no God in all the earth. There is no God in all the earth. This is what the heathen, the Syrian king, he said, Man, there's no other God on in all the earth, but where? But in Israel. But in where? But in Israel. What did he say? But in Israel. No other God in all the earth. But in Israel, to hell with Buddha, to hell with Allah, to hell with Caesar Borgia, right? To hell with this homosexual, man. To hell with him. Right? Our God is Yahweh. That's our power. Right? The true living God that actually created the heaven and earth. And he chose y'all above everybody. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Bring this up. It's book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 21. Read about Christ. Read. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah. What say? Thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah. Jesus, Yahweh Shah, the deliverer, he saves. Read. For he shall save his people from their sin. Do what? He shall save his people from their sin. He'll save his people from their sins. His. H I S. It's my book. Amen. That's his book. Amen. His. Right, my people. On, That's who I died for. Bring this up. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. And it reads, For thou art in holy people. What are these people? For thou art in holy people. What is Jan his wife? For thou art in holy people. Be holy. Set apart. We a little different. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. Be holy unto Yahweh our God. He said we set apart. We didn't say that. God said it. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. Are we special. All that we've been through, anybody else would have been obliterated off the earth. Right. Nobody could have been put through that. Nobody could have been that, that gold put through the fire and getting purified like we could. The so-called white man would have folded. Right? He, he jump off a cliff when he loses his job. How many jobs you done lost, brother? And we ain't got another damn job, man. How many times we was on our, our knuckles, bare knuckles, knuckles bleeding, and we still made it out. Because our people always persevere, because we strong, and God made it special. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people. What God say? Above all people. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God said we separate and we above everybody uh, on the earth. By Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Right? Shema Mashiach Yahweh Yahweh said that. Say it one more time. Yahweh. Yahweh. 
Yahweh Shah. Yahweh I say that with, with force. That's our God right there, man. That's our language. Right? They tried to take this from us. They tried to hide this from us. But hold on, these so-called black men, these thugs, these killers, these hoodlums, these whores, these thugs. How do they know they're the children of God? How do they learn it? We hid this from them so long. These niggas couldn't read. Now they got the Bible and they shaking their hand and telling you, wait, we the people of this book, man. And can't nobody take that from us. Can't nobody take that from us, man. This is our truth right here. And this is the greatest thing on the planet. All right. All praises to the Most High. Right, that means rise Israel. Because that's what we doing. Look at this. We are young black, so-called black men. Look at all these families. Some brother wives ain't even, I mean, check this out. We got kids and family, we young black men. Where do you see this at? Where have you ever seen so, I've seen the Muslims, they selling bean pies, but they, 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 they got two kids out of, and the Christian, he, I mean, you don't see this. Check that out, little man got a Bible. Where you seen that, man? Young men with Bibles in their hand. Young black, so-called black men with their families. You don't see this anywhere. This is all through the power of the Most High. This is all the Lord. This ain't our doing. We didn't come out here for our, I mean, we, we didn't come out here on our own. I, I used to didn't believe in the Bible six years ago. Six, seven years ago, I said, that's a white man book. That's BS, man. Get out of my face. And now look, I'm passionately yelling at the top of my lungs, reading out the Bible. That's a miracle. Amen. How did that happen? Because God made it happen. All praises to the most son. And we believe in you, Jay. We know you can do this. We're going to put your name in our group chat with 20, 25 brothers. And we're going to all throw up a prayer for you, man. We're going to all throw up a prayer for you. That the Lord give you that unction of the Spirit so you can come and serve Him. Holy. Put on your fringes. Hey, we got our own clothing. We wore fringes. That's our, our bloodline. That's our kosher. That's what we do. Right? And we wear these fringes so we remember to keep the commandments. Right? You always go read it for them? God. Bring it up. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 37. You know? And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Who are the children of Israel? Us. 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 And who is Yahweh? God. God. Our God. The God of Israel, right? And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. It's not a fashion state. Yeah. We're not out here because we just a click and we a code and we we all just go wear these these fringes and be different. No, God said we ought to wear fringes. We just keeping the commandments. Read. Throughout their generations. So like real quick, we got the young men and we got the older men in this thing. All praise to the most high. Bring it up. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So you can have any color fringe, but hey, you gotta have that blue ribbon. Cause it, blue is a hard, rare color to get in the ancient world. Like the royal, the royal men will wear purple, a derivative of blue. It's hard to get that color. So that's a royal color. So God, knowing we kings and priests and royalty and gods on the earth, He made us wear the blue. Right, right. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of Yahweh and do them. All right, so we wore the fringes so we can remember to do and keep the commandments. So you look at your friends, ah, oh, I can't do Christmas. Oh, I, I, I can't eat that, that shrimp. Oh, I can't do X, Y, Z. So that's why we, we wear the fringes. It's that physical reminder, because God knows his people. He know we ain't know what was going on, so he would, we would have to have some kind of physical reminder right, right, right. that we that we will uh be able to come back to him. give me the book of baruch chapter 2. Thank you. verse 40 it says that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your god so this is holy. all right because again i don't know if you broke it down but being holy means that you're separate from everybody else that's why anytime our brothers we see somebody with fringes we, it's like we see an angel come from the heavens. So we're like, damn, where you come from? Like, I don't see this all the time. Right. All right, so this is how you be holy to our God. See that? That's how we uh, remain set apart. Cause that we just look, you just look a little different. Like these young brothers got a different spirit on. Them. All right. That's the Most High God uh, dwelling upon us. Bring this up. This is the book of Baruch, chapter two, verse twenty-eight, and it reads thus: right. As thou spakest by the servant Moses. In the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations. Which we read, the Lord said we would go into slavery on ships. He would turn that great multitude and now be spread all across the four corners of the earth due to our disobedience, right? 
where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me. The Lord said, I knew they wouldn't hear me. Read. Because it is a stiff-necked people. What are we? It is a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked. We hard-head as hell. Right? I got to tell my son the same thing. Oh. And he only one, though. But I got to tell him the same thing. Oh. And over. And over. Right? Can you read it? That's how we is to the Lord. Right? Read But in the land of their captivity. In the land of our captivities. We shall what? Shall remember themselves. Shall what? They shall remember themselves. Now, hold on. That's another prophecy being fulfilled. What's your uh, race? Israel. 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 What's your race? Israel. Y'all remember. Y'all fulfilling that prophecy. Y'all remembering y'all selves. Because y'all heard. I see you. You caught yourself. You almost said that color. Yeah, you almost said that color, man. I caught you. Right? But then you kind of say, no, wait. I'm going to get rid of that. Right? Give me John chapter 1 and, uh, I believe, 49. You can drop that. Give me Genesis 32 and 28. Right, the man of God. Verse 47. This book of John, chapter 1, verse 47. Yahweh Shai, son Nathaniel, coming to him and said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed. I saw a J and I said, Behold, an Israelite indeed. An Israelite indeed. I don't see a black man. I see a mighty, powerful, godly, devout Jew. Israelite. Right? You gotta wear the dress. You know, women can't wear pants according to the Bible. You know, a lot of our women don't want to hear that. They can't wear pants. Right? Men wear pants, women wear dresses. Women throw, go throw fringes on their dresses, like the sisters. Sisters got the, got the fringes on their dresses, like the brothers. Brothers got the fringes on, right? So bring this up. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 32 and verse 28, and it reads thus. Right. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Thy name is no more black, Afro-American, a damn hairstyle. Mm -hmm. No name is no more African-American. Scipio's African, that's a white man. America of Vespucci, a white man. It's no more African American. That's that's done away with. But what is his name? But Israel. But what? But Israel. But Israel, really? For as a prince has thou power with Yahweh. As a prince has thou power with God. That's what Israel means. Yasha Allah means he prince God. You're a prince and princess of the Most High. That's who you are. Give us five things y'all learn. Five things. Israelites. What not to eat. You say what? What not to eat. What, what, what can't we eat? Uh, shrimp. Shrimp, right? Pork. Pork. What about lobster? Lobster. 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 How about salmon? Yeah, salmon. It's a fish with fin. And what else? Fin. It has, it has fin. Yeah, you can eat that yeah. then. That was a trick question. <laughs> right? So you can't eat the shrimp, crab, lobster, right? No, you can't eat catfish either. Because it ain't got scales. You learn what we can eat. That's two things. What can we eat? You learn we Israelites. What else? Holidays. Holidays. Name, name one that we got to keep every single week. Seven. 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 Which is when? Is Wednesday? Friday. Friday. Yes. Saturday, sundown. That's a full day, yep. Yeah? So that's the Shabbat. All right, what else? Jay gotta get in there. Yeah, Jay gotta get in there. You got the last two, Jay. The last holiday. holiday. Yeah, we said that one. Holidays. We we down to three. What else y'all learn? The fridge is okay. Okay. Now you got one more. One more. That you learn. God, it was so much information. Uh, I know it was a lot. We apologize. I said we got the name of the Oh yeah, the name. What's his name? Yahweh. 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 Okay, okay. Bonus round, bonus round. Name one more thing. <laughs> what about the kingdom of heaven? I'm getting y'all here. Kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Yeah. It, you said what you say? It belongs to us. It's twelve gates. Okay. And who gonna be in those gates with us? The 12 tribes of Israel. But hold on, the other nations are going to be with us. No, remember that part? But how? That's serving. That's serving. Yes. Exactly. Okay, there you go. All praise. Clap it up. And I didn't get your name. What's your name? Treva? Jay and Treva. Nelson. Oh, and Nelson. Nelson and Treva. All right, Nelson and Treva. I can't call them Jay. I think somebody else said it was Jay. Yeah, we got a uh, flyer for you. Yeah, you should have been corrected. Is that right? Yeah. The brother Nelson, brother Nelson, we, we spoke to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, you what you say? 
Your brother's uh, Israel. Yeah, your brother Israel. There you go. Nelson. Nelson from the tribe of Israel, man. I mean, from uh, Israelite from the tribe of Judah, Lord willing. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. We love y'all. We're going to pray for y'all. Treva and Nelson. All praise to the Most High. Come Yashallah. Come Yashallah. Come Yashallah. Come Yashallah. Right, clap it up, man. Clap it up for the Most High, man. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High God, man. Every time. All right, we got to wrap up. Yeah, I think it's been time, man. I'll probably give it up at 7. I'm too, Yeah, I was supposed to give it up at 7. Right? Yeah, that was just weird. I know. I know. Yeah, I was supposed to give it up. All right, come on. You got hot water blood? I was just...